the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Feast of the Apostle Matthias. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth the peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who with untold mercy were pleased to choose as an apostle St. Matthew the tax collector, grant that sustained by his example and intercession, we may merit to hold firm in following you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift, and he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The Word of the Lord. Our response is, their message goes out through all the earth. Their message goes out through all the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. Their message goes out through all the earth. Not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. Their message goes out through all the earth.
Alleluia, alleluia. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praise you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. The man got up and followed Jesus. While he was at table in the man's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well-to-do do do not need a physician. The sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a truth in the gospel today that I think is difficult for any one of us to kind of imagine, but that's the way God works. If you had a gift to give to God, what would be the greatest gift that you could give to God? A gift for God. What would you give God? The answer actually is easy. What does God want from you as a gift? Your sinfulness. It's God's, it's our greatest gift to God because in recognizing our sinfulness, we also recognize what God can do for us in forgiveness. Plus, we begin to really truly see what love God has for us. Matthew, an apostle of the Lord. He is considered a sinner. Why? He is an Israelite, but he's collecting taxes for the Roman Empire. So the people saw him as a sinner. And it says, as Jesus walked by, he saw Matthew actually doing what was considered sinful. He was actually collecting coins. In fact, he was even considered unclean to touch a Roman coin. But this is what Matthew was collecting. It's in the middle of that that Jesus looks at Matthew and says to him, follow me. Now, if you heard those two words, follow me, would you jump up and go? I don't think I would. But what is taking place here is that Matthew obviously knows that what he is doing is wrong. Taking money from his own people to pay for the Roman Empire. He knows he's doing something wrong. But it wasn't the words that Jesus said to Matthew, follow me. It was how he said those words. He must have said them in such a way that it really touched Matthew's heart. There's a famous painting, I think it's by Rembrandt. It shows Jesus standing there and Matthew is at his table collecting taxes. And you can see Matthew going, Me? (laughs) You want me to come and follow you? It's an unbelievable thing. The Lord says, I have come not to call the righteous, but to call sinners. Pope Francis, I read this morning, his motto for his papacy and his his whole life was this, miserando ut erigendo, which means he mercied me in order to choose me. What Pope Francis had to do before he could hear the voice of God was to obviously give the gift of his sinfulness to Jesus. It was in that sinfulness then that Jesus called him to lead a good life. So I know as human beings, we tend to try to hide the bad things we do in life, especially if they're really serious sin. 
But there is one person who wants those sins as your and my gift to him. That is our sinfulness. Because it's in our sinfulness we realize the love that God has for us because he still does what? Even no matter how bad our sin is, he still calls us. He still calls us one of his children, one of the people of God. And so it's a whole different way of life. Paul, think about St. Paul. He spent much of his adult life chasing down Christians so he could have them executed or put in prison because they were Christians. And whenever God called him, he realized the sinfulness of his actions, and he followed Jesus for the rest of his life and endured many, many terrible things just to be able to spread the word. So today, we each of us have a gift. And it just seems like if there's any one person we would like to have God have someone not know what we do that is sinful, it would be God. But I think, like I said yesterday, my mother said, to remember God sees everything and knows everything. Well, in a way, that's a good thing. Because now we have the ability to offer that to God, and God now has the ability to offer us his love, which enables us to continue to do good things in life. Even Matthew, though he is considered a sinner, through his whole life, he still considers himself a what? A sinner. But nevertheless, we are still the children of God. As the children of God, we will be sinners until we are called to the next world to spend eternity with the Lord. So anything in your life that really has the ability to make you feel not good about yourself or to make you feel bad about yourself or whatever, those are the things you want to offer to God because it is in that sinfulness that God offers us his love. I know it sounds like a contradiction, but that's how God works. spirit of humility, we present our needs to the Father. For church leaders, may the peace and mind of Christ be their guide and their strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For all in civil power and authority, may Christ strengthen their conviction for peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord. For all who are facing difficult trials and challenges in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the outpouring of the Holy Spirit continue to make us holy in the sight of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord. For those who have died, may they take their place at the eternal feast in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, listen to these, the prayers and the pleadings of your children. We ask that in your wisdom to grant them to us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate anew the memory of Saint Matthew, we bring your sacrifices and prayers, O Lord, humbly imploring you to look kindly on your church, whose faith you have nourished by the preaching of the apostles through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For your eternal shepherd do not desert your flock but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic Church. Remember, Lord, your servants. Remember all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Crossogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damon, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we graciously graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, to acknowledge, and to approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead, the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, Lord, we pray, all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who are those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, and Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, and Peter, Felicita, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Sharing in that saving joy, O Lord, with which St. Matthew welcomed the Savior as a guest in his home, we pray, grant that we may always be renewed by the food we receive from Jesus Christ, who came to call not the just, but sinners to salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious martyrs of the Apostle Matthew. Amen. May he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles you may inherit the eternal homeland. By their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.